plague has not yet left us. And justice globally has not yet been found. And in the midst of all this, I am coming now from a country in the midst of a terrible storm. But still, this is a moment of peace and relaxation. This is Lockdown Bar. Uh, this week's poem could be seen as something of a satire. It is called Courtier and Rebel. O oh man who follows English ways, who cut your thick, clustering hair, graceful hand of my choice, you are not Donica's good son. If you were, you would not give up your hair for an artificial English mould, the fairest ornament in the land of Fola, and your head would not be tonsured. You think the yellow head of hair unfashionable. He detests both wearing locks and going bald after the English style. Your characters are different indeed. A man who never loved English ways is Owen Bourne, beloved of noble ladies. To English ways he never gave his heart, a savage life he chose. Your mind is nothing to Owen Bourne, a man who would give breeches for a trifle, who asked no cloak but a rag, who had no wish for coat and leggings. He would hate to carry at his ankle a jewelled spur on a boot or stockings in the English style. He will have no locks upon him. A blunt rapier that would not kill a fly, the weight of an awl sticking out behind as one goes to a hill of assembly. The son of Dunica saw no beauty in that. Little he cares for a mantle embroidered, or a high Dutch collar, or a gold ring that would only be irksome, or a satin scarf down to the heels. He has no longing for a feather bed. He had rather lie upon rushes. Pleasanter to Dunica's good son is a hut of rough poles than the battlements of a tower. A troop of horse at the brink of a gap. Fierce fight, a struggle with foot soldiers. These are some of the desires of Dunica's son. And seeking battle against the foreigners. How unlike are you to Owen Bourne? They laugh at your foot on the stepping stone. Pity that you have not seen your fault. O oh, man who follows English ways. There are two ways to read this poem. One is purely through a lens of toxic masculinity, and that is certainly a, a valid reading of the poem. There is a very specific ideal of masculinity being put forward here and the subject of the poem is being denigrated for not fitting it. However, there is another way to view it. You need to understand that Ireland has a long history of being colonized by England and that the subject of this poem appears to be willingly going along with that colonization, he appears to be allowing himself to become assimilated. And so the poet is denigrating this man's erasure of his own culture. Because the English, when they were colonizing Ireland, they did make strong attempts to eliminate and stamp out traces of Irish culture. However, the poet is still doing this through a lens of toxic masculinity, and that must be taken into account. I hope you've enjoyed this poem, and thank you for watching.